Hey guys, it's Elizabeth of ERWPlans.com. Today I'm going to show you how you can use your passion planner to ace your studies. First, I'm going to show you how to keep track of your classes in, this can be done in either a medium passion planner or you can do this in your Amplify planner or any other B5 planner with this digital download from uh, my shop. Uh, your semester at a glance. You can also get it as a sticker. Because I know what it's like to be a broke college student, I have uh, two degrees and a certification and I'm currently going for my second certification. Um, I totally get it. Like it's ridiculous to spend a ton of money on really expensive, fun paper stuff like I usually use. So today I'm going to show you a really cheap hack to uh, get this semester at a glance into your passion planner or your amplified planner but first we're going to start by filling out our semester at a glance uh, to do that i have my print out you, like i said you can also get it as a sticker um, if you want to do this the fancy way but we're just going to use a printout on regular copy paper today to start with our semester at a glance i've got my mild liners but of course you can use whatever color coding system you want. Um, you, you can use just any highlighter or marker. It, it doesn't really matter. So we'll get started. Um, now obviously I'm not in college anymore, um, but I am going to use my experience from when I was in college and the classes I'm taking for my certification to give you an example of how to fill this semester at a glance out. Okay? And a little bit of an imagination. So we'll just imagine that you have your printout I'm guessing you guys still get printouts of your class schedule or however you've received your schedule for the semester. And we're just gonna go ahead and fill out the schedule. Um, I, For me, I have SBE and my classes are on Tuesdays from 1 to 2 p.m. I have Level Up and that is on Thursdays from 10 to 11.30 a.m. Um, I also have a lot of independent study going on, so I'm going to actually put down time for my master classes, and I'm going to make that a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, so you can see what it looks like to do that. And we'll say that those are going to be Monday, Wednesday, Friday from, let's say 11, let's say 11.30 to 1, because then I'll follow right into my SBE. And then we'll say my PP, uh, yeah, CPP cl prep class. And we'll do that on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And we'll do that from 11.30 to one also. So right after level up, I have that. And then we'll schedule a study hall, let's call it, we'll schedule study time. And I'm going to do that every night at, let's say, let's, let's call that our, um, our regular. So that's going to be Monday through Sunday. And we'll do that on those days from 4 to 5 p.m. Now, with this uh, design, if you're getting it as a sticker, you have the option of getting the, date, the start times whenever. Um, if you get the PDF, you're stuck with the 7 to 4. Well, it starts at 7 a.m. ends at technically 5 p.m. here. Uh, just because when I was in college, I never had a class that started before 7 a.m. And only when I was doing night classes, the, the crazy semester that I took uh, 21 credits um, to graduate because I was just done with it and I wanted it to be over, <laughs> then... Uh, that's the only time I did night classes. Um, obviously, if you want to have different time options as a sticker, you can order that in the shop. It's already a feature. Or you can request a uh, custom order if you want the digital download with the custom times. So I'm going to just go ahead and fill in my class schedule. Now I have color coded all of my classes because I'm a color coding person. And I'll show you why that's kind of important in a bit. 
Um, we'll start with my SBE, which I made yellow. And I'm just gonna color right in here on my schedule, my color. And then I'm gonna go ahead and say, okay, that's Tuesdays from one to 2 p.m. So then I just fill in my lines on Tuesdays, okay? And we'll do the same thing with our level up class on Thursdays. So on Thursdays from 10 to 11.30. And these, I did these blocks as 15 minute increments. I don't know if it's still the same now. When I was in college, a lot of the classes started like at 11.15 or whatever, because they were trying to give you like 15 minutes between classes to get coffee or to run back to your dorm and like switch out books. Cause some of those classes, like when I took English classes, Holy crap, those uh, Norton anthologies. Oh my God. If you guys get like digital textbooks nowadays, I'm super jealous because holy crap, those Norton anthologies, I swear to you, I have back problems today because of carrying around all those Norton anthologies back when I was an English major. So um, if you're kind of missing what I've done, I'm just continuing to go through here and color code in all of my classes. This is my Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, I started life as an English major. Uh, when I was in high school, I took photography classes and I really love photography. And I took English classes and I really love writing. And my parents said, well, we're not gonna pay for you to throw away, God, 10,000 or however much money it was back in the 2000s to uh, go to school for a degree that's gonna be useless. So no, you're not gonna do that. And no, that's pretty bummed out. So I switched to an English major and I started taking all these creative writing classes. And again, the hammer came down like, look, you're, are you gonna teach? And I said, no, I'm not gonna teach. And they said, well, if you're not gonna teach, we're not spending all this money on you to uh, go to college just to throw your money away again, you know. So I switched majors yet again and we ended up majoring in psychology. And I got, um, it actually took me a little bit longer because I had most of the credits for the uh, uh, English degree already done at that point. Um, so I did a county college uh, couple of semesters to get my psychology gen eds up and then so I you know finished that up got that degree and uh, that's how I ended up with two degrees by the way I ended up with that associate's degree as well as my uh, bachelor's degree and then once all that's done and I'm out on my own for a while and you know paying for myself and working I was working in the court system considering going to law school because psychology degree, by the way, regardless of what anyone tells you, psychology degree is kind of worthless if you don't go on to a uh, second program, such as a uh, master's or a PhD or something like that. Um, I was considering going to law school because I'd been working in the court system for a while at that point. And I realized I really wanted to do the photography thing full time. I'd been doing that to get myself through college. So I said, all right, you know what? I'm gonna go back to school. And I was really into fashion photography and there was a class in uh, fashion business and essentials at Parsons the New School. And I said, oh, okay, I'll do that. And I did that class. And then I ended up continuing to go there until I had a degree or a certificate in um, uh, fashion industry with the focus on fashion photography. You know, I'm a photographer and a sticker designer. So, because most of my most of my gen eds ended up being in graphic design. It was my favorite class. Graphic design was a class I had in high school, and it was my favorite class, uh, other than photography. And uh, yeah, so that ended up being how that went down and uh, true story I still have I'm still paying on about $10,000 worth of student loans 
because the money my parents gave me wasn't enough and I had to do so many extra classes. So the moral of the story, I guess, is if your parents say, well, you have to major in this thing or you can't major in that thing because it's there's no hope for, uh, you know, making money, uh, you can tell them to piss off because they're probably not going to pay for all of it anyway. And honestly, whatever degree they think a lot of money is in, probably isn't. Uh, my husband had a uh, has a degree in business administration. Uh, guess how you know lucrative an MBA is? Not very. Uh, so point being, yeah, don't just don't even listen to them. Uh, he wanted to go to law school and got an MBA instead. Uh, no, just if you want to go to law school, go to law school. You can figure it out later. If you want to major in art or writing or whatever, major in art or writing or whatever, because you'll probably end up using that more than your other degrees anyway. And nowadays, a bachelor's degree is like a high school diploma for my parents' generation anyway, so you're just going to keep chasing those moving goalposts. So now we've had that pep talk. Um, we, I've highlight, I've color coded all of my time blocks, as you can see. So I have kind of an idea at a glance where I need to be. If I had, as the semester went on, if I have a study group that's going to meet every day at a certain time, kind of like I did this block of study time down here, I would put in my study group. Um, if I have any other specific weekly commitments, like if I had a job I worked every Saturday from let's say 10 to 2 as a part-time job or you know work study or whatever, uh, sports practice, etc., I would put that on the schedule as well. Okay, but this is the every single week, except for, you know, breaks and um, midterms and finals. This is what my life looks like. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, and like I said, we're not going to be fancy on this. I'm going to cut this out. Um, usually I would use my sticker printer, but like I said, I'm trying to use do this in a not particularly fancy way. And I realize now that um, I'm looking at this. I didn't explain the gray boxes at the bottom. I explained my sidebar with the class information. I only designed it with five boxes because when I was in college, five classes a semester was pretty much the average. Um, if you're taking more than that, you could divide those boxes yourself. Because uh, I, I had divide, I made them pretty big so that A, you could do that. If you're crazy like me, the year I did the 21, semester uh, credit semester uh, you could divide subdivide some of those boxes because I had some classes that are only one night a week the boxes are also pretty large so you can put in at a glance class info like the professor's office hours which would be something else you could put on your schedule and you could color code that so I'll show you in just a second what that looks like But first, I gotta finish cutting this out. This is, it goes a lot faster when you use a cutting machine or a, a paper cutter. And it also looks a lot neater, but like I said, we're doing this broke ass college student stuff. Um, if you have, let's say, this class, let's say SB has uh, office hours, you can say office hours. Let's say that's three to four on Wednesdays. I would go in yeah. and because this isn't a fixed thing I would just go I do like a straight line like this and then write in office hours so that way at a glance I know okay I can go see the professor at this in this time block here right before my study time block here if I need to, but if I have other things come, but this isn't a totally blocked out time. This is plenty of free time. Okay. Um, and you can do that with any kind of timing. Like if you have, when I was in college, uh, this, some of the colleges only had the uh, dining halls open for certain periods of time for meals. You could block those off doing the same kind of thing. Uh, all right. So there we go. Oh, and I was going to explain the boxes at the bottom. I think they're kind of self-explanatory, but just to kind of go over the classes to graduate, this is where you would list out any gen eds that you're taking um, that you still need to take. So if you're a freshman, this is going to be pretty full. If you're a senior, well, hopefully your gen eds are you know, all wrapped up. Uh, 
And then classes to graduate degree, same thing. You know, there's usually, when I was in college, it was maybe uh, somewhere between 40 to 60 uh, credits to graduate in your degree field. Um, if I remember correctly, it was like, I think I'd do like 15 classes, three credit classes. Um, so you would just list those out. Um, you have that giant course catalog. Pick out all the ones that you want to take, put them here. All your electives that you want to take at all. This isn't to grad necessarily to graduate. Just list out all the electives you want. And then you can just kind of check them off. And when you go to do your enrollment for next semester or for the next year, you'll know which classes you've completed. Because you can just move bump these over. And which classes you still want to look at, see if that one's being offered. Okay. So that's what that kind of looks like. Now I want to show you how to install this in a real quick and easy and not expensive sort of way. So to install this, I'm going to do this in a real quick and easy sort of way. Um, when I put this planner together, I had this index page here all set up. Um, you have a couple options. You can use a spatula tool or something else to just go ahead get under here and remove the glue for this back page and then we can make a flip out back here like that okay and that will give you some flip out space or you can make your flip out in the front however you want to do it um, and I have other videos that show you how to make a flip out key what I'm going to do here I'm gonna start I, I really filled this planner up cool I'll do my flip out key in the front here and in the past, I've shown you with like some really fancy cardboard and uh, some uh, pa washi paper specifically. This is going to be the quick and easy way to make a flip out key. We're going to start by taping our pages together. I'm just going to use, I want something kind of sturdy. I'll use this white here. So the eh, white's okay, but you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing just realized that. So we'll use this, this blue color here so you can see when I'm doing it. I put these sheets together. Kind of line them up here as best I can. Edge to edge. And without covering over anything that I've written, I'm going to tape them together on the front, flip it over, and then tape them together on the back. Okay. Scissors. Now we can fold this right where the two pages break apart, which is using the wash, the strength of the washi, which is a bit more durable than this copy paper to make a fold. And then we're going to follow that exact same pattern on the inside of the planner here. And this doesn't have to be in the cover area either. You can do this on any of the blank pages inside your planner. I just like to do it in the cover area. It tends to be a bit stronger. And then same thing, we're gonna flip this open. This is just like adding a, uh, a flippy page, which I've done in, there's some other videos that show you how I add a flippy page. This is the exact same process as adding a flippy page. And again, I'm trying not to cover up any of my text on in either page. Okay. Not exactly the neatest, but you get the point. I still have my index. I can still use the index, but I also have out this have this giant flip out of my schedule. Now, and then we fold it up like so to use whatever pages in here we want. See, flippy page, 
same process, this is a flippy page. The difference is that I can unfold this, and this is key, and then, oh, let's find my first week of my semester here. When I go to plan my week, I can just transpose these into here, and then I can plan things like work or um, if I have a flexible work schedule or studying or other activities that aren't regular, I can schedule in this around here and I've got more blocks so that works out better. And I'll show you, let me show you exactly how we do that. Uh, this is a Sunday start planner. My semester plants print out comes in a Monday start so you got to be a little bit careful when you're using this. I'm going to go through each color by color and just do a time blocking. Now there's different methods for doing your time blocks. You can do it this way. You can block out the entire, like the white lines and everything. Uh, I like to do it this way because I don't want to see the times. I know that these times are no longer available for me. But it's color blocking is really a personal preference. It's entirely up to you. So this is 11 to 1230. Okay. Um, and the reason that we're not just going through and knocking out all the weeks at once in our planner, like as soon as we get our class schedule, is because I've had the experience in college, and I don't know, maybe you guys haven't, but I definitely had the experience where the professor says, oh, by the way, we're not going to have class next week or we're not going to have class on Monday next week because I have personal shit I got to go. And you're like, oh, are you kidding me? But <laughs> I know that's how I always feel. I'm like, really? But, uh, you know, shit happens. And so what I'm going to do is just kind of block things off this way when I'm planning out my week. so that I know, oh hey, I can't do something at that time if someone wants to like get together during a certain time because I have other things planned. All right, and like I said in the uh, other part of this video, um, this works if you um, also are just independently learning, you can block off like these are the online classes and when I'm taking them. and. Now I have this color coding all done. Um, you can go ahead and add in different dates or different appointments. So like if you get your work schedule now and you're working like six to 10, you can have your color for work. Let's make work kind of gray. Work sucks. <laughs> when you're in college, work totally sucks. And you would just do the same kind of thing. If we're working six to 10 on Sunday, let's say, I don't know what mall would be open six to ten on a Sunday but if that's it we can just do that and you can you know bring work or whatever and you can also do the same thing with like this was study time and this class was master class and by doing it this way um, the other thing that you uh, get is that if there's a topic that you're looking at or if you have a particular chapter that you need to read for this class you can go ahead and be like okay um, for this topic um, is lighting and then let's say I have to read pages you know 33 to 37 now I know what I need to have done before I get to that class so that's the other reason I kind of leave it blocked off like that um, if that, you know, if none of oh, this makes sense, please let me know. Um, let Leave a comment if this doesn't make sense. This is how I did it in college. I had a different planner at the time, but this is how I set up college. Um, study, in this case, I'd be studying uh, lighting because I have to do lighting here. Um, and you can also mark off things like, let's say this pink one was CPP. And that's, I only get tested once on that, but let's say it was an actual college class. Then I could say, oh, today's test day. And then my topic is, let's say, lighting again. 
And then when I look at my week, I go, oh, okay, cool. I know that. Um, some of the classes you take will give you a syllabus uh, that'll give, lay all this out so you could, in theory, go through your entire weeks and do these blocking techniques with when the tests are, what you're studying, what the class topics are going to be, so that when you go to set up your week, you can go, oh, hey, look, I already know I have this test coming up. Okay. And then the same thing for, like, this week's folks. If I know I have this test on Tuesday... Light test to use. That doesn't look right. That looks right. Okay. Something like that. All right. So that is how I would use this flip out key to go through and schedule things. And then I could add in work. I could add in a very awesome party. Let's make my party over here. Whatever. So that would be how I would use this key to plan out my week. Finally, I'm going to show you how we're going to take that class schedule and turn it into and use our class tracker and assignment tracker to help us get the goal we want. Um, if you were doing this all in the same planner, you would have this flippy key in the front and you would have these class trackers in the back. Uh, however, I wanted to use my uh, small, so we'll just pretend that this key is in my small, but I'm using my small here. I've done my best to do these colors to, for the sticker to match the color code in my chart here so that I will be able to go, oh, okay, this is red, this is the kind of reddish color, this class tracker goes with this. Um, there are two options in the store for the class tracker part, by the way. Um, it is either an online class tracker or the uh, in-person class tracker. Uh, the difference is you will, instead where it says instructor here, it'll be the location uh, of your class, then the instructor, then the email, their office hours, and their office location. For this one, because a lot of classes are online, thanks to COVID, uh, we have the date, time, the instructor, the instructor's email, office hours, I'm assuming virtual office hours are a thing. Uh, your login ID or login number for if your class is on Zoom or Ring Central or something similar to that, you're going to need a number to call to dial into the class and then the password to get into the class. So, um, and then we still have the contacts for your class. So, let's, we'll, we'll make this my, uh, my CPP prep class. And that is Tuesdays and Thursdays. I had it at 11.30 to 1 p.m. And I got this information from my chart here. Okay. Um, for me, this is self-taught, but let's say I had an instructor, let's call him Dr. Bob. And his email is dbob at school.edu. His office hours uh, we had at 3 to 4 on Wednesdays. So Wednesdays from 3 to 4. And we once again get that from our semester at a glance that we previously filled out. Okay. And then once again, if I'm logging in, it would be whatever. My, I'll say my username for the uh, program I use is my first letter and last name. And then whatever the password is for that class. Okay. And then, again, the people in my class that I can reach out to if I miss it. Um, another thing you could do here would be to put over here, like, the video, the recordings of the classes, if your class, if you're lucky enough to have your class recording, the person that records them and puts them up is Alicia. And then I could have her info. And then the goes live. Not, I shouldn't say live time, but rec rec live recording time. Recording goes live at, let's say, uh, 5 p.m. 
Tuesdays and Thursdays. So that way, if I miss the class at one th at 11.30, I know that at 5 p.m. I can go to my school's website and the class will be up for me to view then, if your school does that. Required reading is all of the texts that you have to read, websites, etc. So I've got uh, from my class. Lighting, science, and magic. And we have photography. This is me studying for my uh, certified professional photographer degree. Um, real basic, if you have a website, you know, you could put the website in there. Um, you might even like note on here if you can get this online, like if you're getting like a Kindle download, which I'm super jealous of you guys. Uh, as I said earlier, when I was in school, it was just like this giant thick books that broke your back and cost like $200 in like 2001. So I can't imagine what those books cost now. Um, so yeah, you can just, you know, put those in. You can even make like an, your matrix if you have to buy something. So you can do like buy rent. And I bought this and cost and this one was 70 and then resell. And let's say I'll get, 30, let's say, oh God, 30, I wish. So I'll get, I'll get 20, let's say. So you could fill that out. So you know how much money you're losing on your school books. I used to pay attention to that when I was in college because when I was in college, every dime counted. So our grading matrix. Now this was something I came up with my second year of high school, I think, because my high school was a college prep. And so they pretty much did syllabus, uh, syllabuses or syllabi uh, the same as a college would. And it takes a little bit of exp explanation, but this will really help you keep track of your grades and be able to see where you are during the year. Uh, when you get your syllabus from your professor, it's going to have the grading matrix or whatever they're calling it, how your grades are weighted. Uh, there's almost always an attendance portion or a participation grade. And the percent of that, it's, all, um, it's usually five to 10%, almost always has been 10% in my experience. Um, and I'm gonna leave the my grades and the weighted part blank. And I'm just gonna go through the entire syllabus. So let's say homework. And we'll say that's also 10%. Uh, there might be a group project. And we'll say that that's, let's call that 25% of your grade. We'll say there's a uh, midterm. Those things are always heavily weighted, so we'll call that 25%. Final. And then since there's 5% left over, when I was in high school, I don't, they didn't do this in college. When I was in high school, there was a, the notebook check. Actually, in some of my college classes too, when I was in English, and you had to write something daily, there'd be a check where they'd just come through and make sure you, you turn in your notebook, essentially at the beginning of the class, take your tests. I didn't put tests on here. We'll change that. We'll say it's a notebook check slash homework. We'll call that 5%. We'll change this homework up here to tests and quizzes. I always forgot. I forget about tests and quizzes. When you're, uh, when you, do a photography major and also when you switch to psychology there's not a lot of like pop quizzes that or testing that kind of thing except in educational where they test you very frequently because that's how educational psychology works um okay so this should add up to 100 percent if it doesn't double check the syllabus if it still doesn't talk to your professor about why their grading matrix doesn't add up to 100 percent um the rest of this we can't fill out quite yet We'll go back over here. I don't need to worry about my semester at glance anymore at this point. I'll just put in our title. I have on this sticker in light gray so you can just give you an example of how this works. Filled in the attendance part. Let's say, uh, in this case, for, we'll put in attendance. 
and the type is, well, uh, participation. Slash attendance, we're just gonna put in participation. Let's say you get three excused absences and you take, and you have, uh, let's say you have 54 class, or 53 classes during your semester, and you have three excused absences, and you actually miss four classes, okay? So you need, you must attend 50 classes out of the 53 to get full credit for your participation, but you only attended 49, that's how your score looks, okay? And then we can translate that into a grade by div not dividing 49 by 50, gets you a 98, okay? Um, let's say you have test, well, we'll start with quizzes, quiz, Number one, and I always like to put the date down. So let's say August 31st, quiz. And then let's say some teachers will give you the number itself. Like, okay, you got an 80 on this. Maybe they'll just give you an, a letter grade, whatever, or they'll do the how many you got right out of how many. Whatever they're giving you, you're gonna put in your the actual score so that whatever th it is on your page matches here. So in this case, I'm going to say I got nine out of 10, right? So I have a 90. Um, we'll say there's a quiz two. And that was on September 5th, uh, September 7th, let's say. We'll just pretend this is an educational site class where they quiz you randomly and frequently. And let's say I, oh my god, I didn't study for this one at all, totally bombed it. 5 out of 10, 50, totally failing. Okay, and then we have homework check number one. And that was due September 10th. And we'll call that notebook. And let's say I got full credit, I got a check, let's say it's a check plus check minus system. Check, check plus check minus. I got a check plus because I did excellent work. Uh, you need to figure out how you're weighting your check, check plus check minus. You can always ask the professor, that's why we have office hours, to ask them, how are you weighting your check plus check minus system? Is it an overall number of checks pluses versus check minuses? You know, figure it out, figure out how they're weighting it. Um, if it's like an A, C, or F sort of situation, which was how it was in my colleges. Um, and that was always toward the high end of things. Um, but I've definitely had some where the goal was to have all checks. So if you have end up with 10 assignments, you want to have 10 checks. A check plus is like you did double work almost. Okay, so let's say, oh yeah, I did it. You're gonna leave. You're just gonna give yourself a one here, okay? If it's a check, if it's a check plus, maybe it's a one point five. However, your professor is grading it. So then we have another homework check, and maybe they do that October first. That's notebook, and I only got a check, so we have a one, okay? And then you have your group project. And that was due on, like, say, November 1st, midterm. That's usually probably, like, October 11th-ish. And then final is usually, like, the first week of December. We'll say December 7th. Okay. And then project or paper, midterm. Okay, and we'll say for the for the group project, because group projects suck, you got an 85. And um, we'll say for your midterm, you got a, let's, let, let, let's call it, a, you got 90 out of 100 questions, and then for your final, you did a lot better, and you got 95 out of 100 questions. These translate really easy into an 85, 90, 85. Now you're saying, okay, cool, you you grade, you got all your grades. How do I know what my final grade's gonna be? Because this is all kind of confusing. That's where this comes in. 
Yeah. You're going to take, you're going to add up everything for your, um, well, we'll start with attendance. Attendance, your actual grade was a 98. So weighted, that's a 0.98. We take this, you divide it by 10, or you multiply it by 0 0.1, however you want to look at it, you get your 98. Okay? And then we just keep doing that. Tests and quizzes. We're going to go through and add up all of those tests and quizzes. Of course, we only have two here. So that came out to our total here is 140, 90 plus 50. And then we're going to divide it by the number we have, which is 2. So our total grade, our actual grade, is a 70. Yikes. It's 10% also. So that's a 0.7. Oh. Sorry, 07, 098. There we go. Hmm. Not as hard. Um, okay. Our group project, we only have one that's an 85. Now this is where it gets a little bit tricky because we're going to multiply that by 0.25 or divide it by 4, however you want to do that. So let me get a calculator. Okay. So, move on to the group project. There was only one. You got an 85. Put our 85 down here. Divide that by 4 because it's 25%. Right? Seems easy enough. So, you got it. 0.2, doing this right this time, and then 1, 2, 5. And you're free to round up. Don't have to. Your midterm was a 90. Again, you're going to divide it by 4. 0.2. 2. 5. Your final was a 95. Good job, by the way. So feel free to round. Then your notebook checks, you have a check plus and a uh, check. So you have a total is a 2.5 for this case. Divided by 2 is a 1.25. This is 5% of your grade. This is going to be real dang annoying to add in. Um, but essentially, you have a 0. and something when you multiply that out, okay? And now all you gotta do is add up your columns, which is why this one you don't worry about so much. So, eight, two is 10, 15, 20, zero, two, that's 11, 18, 19, 20, Four, two, two, four, six, eight. So your anticipated grade is eighty-four percent. That's a B, and that's pretty much because you bombed one quiz. Okay, um, but that's how you would figure that out. Now you're like, well, how can I do the anticipated? Because you said I could ant actually see where I needed to be, let's say, for my final exam. What do I need to be to actually get this 784 to be an A? Excellent question. So, I'll use the back page here. Your attendance score, let's assume that you're, you're just, you need your final exam grade, you need to know what you need. You need to know what you need to get for your final exam. So we already know what your attendance score is. It's a .098. We're wrong with the weighted, okay? quizzes, you totally bombed out, remember. Your group project is what it is. And your midterm is what it is. And your notebook is what it is. And yeah, well, at least you did a good job on your notebook. Okay. Going to add these up. So 10, 20, okay. 10, 21, 6, and then you just subtract 1. 
Okay. If you're looking at that going, oh God, negative numbers, we'll just flip it. Nine. So you need to get a 0.39 in order to get 100. Now, what is your grades? Because in my when I was in school, an A was a 93 to 100. Um, but I, by the end of college, it was 90 to 100. So what you need to figure out is what is your lowest possible. So that's 90. So we'll say 90 minus 61 equals 229. You need 0.29. Okay. So that's more than the possible 0.25 that you can get on this. You're going to need somewhere, you're going to need to get above 100 either way, okay, to get to where you need to go. So what grades do you need to get to get to either the low end of A, we'll call it A minus, or the A plus, okay? So what we're going to do is take the 2.29. Right? Multiply it by 4. Hmm. Or divide it by, or uh, divide it by the 0.25, whichever. And you need 116 points, 116 percent. You better hope there's extra credit. And then up here, 0.39 times 4. 156. So you better really hope there's some extra credit um, on that test. But most likely you're not going to have a system necessarily like this. Okay, so okay, so A plus is impossible. A minus you can ask for some extra credit and you can still get to an A, but Overall, your coursework has been kind of B-level, and that one quiz kind of murdered you. So, in the, maybe you have a, you have basically a B here, B here, a failure here, and almost a B there. So, that's kind of how that's going to work out, and that's how you can determine what you need. Now, let's say you had five quizzes. Okay, let's say you got 90s on all of your quizzes except for that 50. that would change your overall total in your quiz category here it, from a 140 to a 410. And when you divide that by five, you're gonna get an 82. So if we change this to an 82, and we still wanna calculate what do we need for an A plus to an A minus, same basic principle applies. Okay, we just add it all up. And subtract one hundred or subtract one, and two, you need a point three seven for that a plus. If you want to get to one hundred, or you're going to need a A point two seven eight to get to that A minus, and so then we do the exact same thing that we did before. So you need a score of one hundred and forty eight percent here to get a hundred, or a much more manageable one hundred and eleven percent. So you got some extra credit you still need to do to get back up to there. Um, 
and of course the more the more quizzes that you have the larger this number gets as long as they're higher um the higher every time this number is higher the percentage you need down here gets lower so you can do this starting from like day one from the first time you have one thing in each section filled out you can figure out what you need on a, you can figure out what you need on your midterm and final if you already have your group project done or more likely since you in this scenario your midterm comes before your group project you can find out what you need on your group project and what you need on your final based on what you already have and making some assumptions about what you're going to need going forward using calculating out these numbers from your current grades it's basically an algebraic formula okay um <laughs> Uh, that I just kind of explained how you're going to do that, but you're going to take, you're going to say, if we make this A, B, C, D, E, okay, you're going to take the ones that you know, A plus B plus D in this case, minus one, equals, and then we need to know D plus E. If that make or D plus E? No, we have D there. C plus E. Okay. So that's your basic formula for finding out what you need to get and your group project and your final. And you could even take that, make that C plus E over two to find out what your average needs to be for to get to a hundred. And then you do the exact same thing. A plus B plus D minus nine or 0.9 equals C plus E over 2. And that's how you would figure out what you need for an A uh, to figure out what you need for a B in that scenario where you want to know your group project score and your final. Minus 1. Oh, minus, in this case, we'll do a uh, 89 0.89 to minus 0 0.80 C plus E over 2. Okay, the, and so that's your B. Assuming that an 89 to an 80 is a B in your school. I hope that all makes sense. I'm a little bit of a math nerd. So like I said, I figured this out back in high school, this basic formula out in high school. Um, the other way you can look at it, uh, by the way, is to take your 1.00 total when you add all this stuff up, um, minus your known variables. Equal unknown over number of unknown. Okay. That's to get your A plus. Or 0.9 minus KV for known variables equals unknown variables over number of variables. Okay. So that, that's your basic formula. And this, by keeping track of what type it is and what your score is and what your grade is, will help you fill out your weighted grades and your weighted grades will help you fill out this formula. Um, when you're setting up your assignment tracker, I just did it he over here as a list, um, looking at, okay, here's everything in order of how I'm getting scored at it. The other way you can do this, if you have a syllabus and you know how many you're gonna have, is write it out in advance. Okay, and then you can just group them all together. And then instead of type, you could make the type the date. So like this would be like nothing. And then 49 out of 50. So we have our 98 here. And then your quizzes, you could just start with, let's see, we had 831, 97, 912, 9, 6, oh, let's see, 16, etc., 930. And then you would just put your scores in. And if you have a syllabus that lists out how many times you're going to have quizzes, you put all that in there. Um, at the very bottom, I would put my final project or paper. 
which is usually due before the midterm. Okay, and that way when you're going to do this, you'd be like, okay, there's my attendance score. You would, let's say, we'll, we'll just use the five quizzes that I used before, 90, 50, 90, 90, let's say you got 100 on this one. Okay, and then I could write down here, total. And then you could do your averages. So in that case, it'd be 90 plus 3 plus 100 plus 50 equals 420. Yay! Divided by 5 equals 84. Okay, and then you would just transpose that number over to here. And then we'd have our notebook checks. And let's just say we did check, or what did we say our first one was? 9, 10, 10, 10, 1, 10, 15, 11, 1, 11, 15, and we'll say, we'll say 11, 30. And let's say we got, you get a check plus, check, 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 big old goose egg, check. Or check minus, however, I think we said we're doing check plus plus check minus. Um, we said the check plus is a 1.5, so 1.5 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. It was a 5.5 divided by the six checks that we had. And then your total equals a 91.6. Okay. And then we can go ahead and use our formula over here. And I just realized I kind of messed up these examples because I forgot we have F, which is the final, which is our unknown. But anyway. So um, basically what we can do is once again, if you're setting it up this way, you have your numbers here, you end up with your, let me start back over here. So let's use our second example. Attendance was a 98, so we have 0.98 for A for attendance. We'll say Q for quizzes. And our quiz total was an 84, and it's 10% of our grade, so that's a 0.84. And then in this, we had a 91.6 for our notebook check times 0.05. That gives us a, we call that N for notebook. And that gives us a 0 0.0458. And then we need to know what our midterm, our project, and our final need to be. So we'll use our formula. It, which is, remember our formula is for an A, is one minus our known variables. These are our unknown variables. One minus known variables, or you can also do it KV minus one. equals unknown variables divided by the number of variables total. So at war 0.9 minus kv equals uv over number of v. Just trying to divide that up there so you can see the different formulas. So here we go, 0.98 plus that should be an O. Sorry. I always forget my zeros here. All right, point O nine eight plus point O four plus point O O. We'll round that up to five. Okay, so when we do our math, let's let's work this out algebraically with the minimum to get an A. A. 
minus, we need point no, 0 0.9 minus kv equals uv over number of variables. We know our number of variables, so kv equals uv divided by 3. So we have our number of unknown variables. And then we're going to do 0 0.9 minus 0 0.187 equals uv over 3. So Point zero point seven one three equals u v over three. Divide this point one seven one three by three. We have two three seven equals u each u v each unknown variable. Okay. So then we multiply that by 4, and that means times 4 equals we need to get a 95% or better on each of our unknowns, which is the midterm, the project, and the final. We need to get, we need to get a 95% on each in order to get that 90, that A minus, okay? So that's how we use this plus our mathematical formula with the weighted grades to give you an anticipated grade and to figure out what grades you need to get in order to get the grade you desire for your class. And that is how we use our Passion Planner or Amplify Planner stickers and that's how we use our planners in order to help ace our classes. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know that was a lot of math today, so um, I hope that all made sense. If it doesn't make sense, leave a comment. You can also check out the blog at uh, erwplans.com to find a um, mathematical explanation for all that math that we did in the third part of our video here. Uh, until next week, uh, Thank you guys again. Make sure you like, subscribe, and leave a comment if any of that didn't make sense, and I'll do my best to address it in the future. Thanks. Bye.